Well, thank you very much. Uh, a couple of uh, months ago, I had a call from the committee that was putting on this event, and they said, Chris, as a practitioner of the First Amendment, uh, tell us, what do you think of uh, freedom of speech? And I said, well, you know, freedom of speech and free speech is very important to me. And they said, so, Chris, you're an advocate of free speech. I said, you bet I am. They said, that's great to hear, Chris. How'd you like to come give one on May 3rd? <laughs> so here I am. Now, uh, we've all heard the phrase that a picture is worth a thousand words, or as my old editor used to say, a picture is worth a thousand phone calls and cancellations to the newspaper. <laughs> but um, um, what, what I do is, is best described as we're the guys who walk into the barroom of democracy, throw the first punch, and then sit back and watch the ensuing brawl. <laughs> You know, there's, there's, there's no denying, though, that editorial cartoons have played a vital and important role in shaping the American discourse and history in this country. Um, what what uh, uh, Edward Monk once said, the famous Dutch uh, expressionist, said that great art has to come from the interior of man. And I'd like to add to that that I think great cartoons have to come from the interior of man. You have to be a little bit... Uh, mad. I have to be a little bit angry each day when I sit down at my desk. You know, my job is to really throw and lob, you know, graphic grenades of caustic commentary into otherwise civil discussions, right? <laughs> so, you know, you, you, look at, you look at this and it sets this great mood, right, uh, with, with Edward Monk. And, it, you know, maybe that guy just saw an editorial cartoon, who knows? <laughs> Seems like people do react like that to some of this work. Um, I go into my office each day and I sit there and I think, you know, I ha like I said, I have to be angry. I have to have a little bile in my, in my stomach to do what I do. I'm not an entertainer. I'm not trying to, you know, outdo Jay Leno on The Tonight Show. Um, but I'm trying to make a difference. I'm really a visual communicator. I'm a visual columnist. But I get, instead of a thousand words to throw at my subject, I get one big rock to lob at them each day. Sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't. And it, it reminds me, I was sitting in my desk one day, kind of slouched in my desk, like I usually am in the morning, drinking my coffee, staring out my window or, or at the wall blankly. It surprisingly looks a lot like you're goofing off, right? So I get this call, and it says, uh, Mr. Britt, I said, yes, and I'm kind of sitting up in my chair, and I uh, said, so this, uh, this is Colonel Smith from the Pentagon. So, okay, by now I'm standing up, like at attention. <laughs> And he says, uh, Secretary Rumsfeld would like to secure uh, the original cartoon you drew of him a couple of weeks ago. Is that going to be a possibility? And I'm like, well, yeah, heck yeah, yeah, sure, that's great. And uh, I said, so does that mean that Secretary Rumsfeld liked my cartoon? He said, well, sir, he is just collecting a lot of different cartoons from cartoonists <laughs> across the country. So now I'm thinking, okay, when they haul me off to Gitmo and, and Cheney is waterboarding me, Rumsfeld will be over there saying, we knew you drew this. Why did you draw it? Why did you draw it? <laughs> so um, anyway, I ended the conversation asking if I could get a ride in one of their stealth fighter jets or bombers. And he said that that was not going to happen either. So anyway, I saw Rumsfeld the cartoon. I hope he has it on his wall. Um, I'm going to show you a, a little of my work now. Um, this first cartoon uh, has uh, Bill Clinton. He was this walking and talking um, cartoon for cartoonists. I had him for eight years, which is like, you know, thank you, Lord. Um, <laughs> and uh, so at the end of, his, at end of his career, I did this cartoon. Every, cart or every uh, president gets his you know, portrait hung in the White House. So <laughs> I think that really captures him. <laughs> so now, when Obama is uh, sworn in, uh, the smartest guy in the Supreme Court, John Roberts, says, you know, he, he flubs the oath, right? So then they have to redo it in the Oval Office. So I got to thinking, you know, I wonder if he flubbed it a couple more times in the Oval Office where we didn't get to see it. How much wood, 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 chuck, chuck, wood, chuck, good, chuck, wood. <laughs> That's not it either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, these guys sometimes they make it too easy. Uh, this next cartoon is uh, steroids in baseball. Uh, the congressional hearings, hey, how was I supposed to know he was taking steroids? <laughs> oh, gosh. 
Next one is the, uh, the guns, uh, the Congress being bought off by the NRA, in my opinion. Kind of a solemn cartoon. Not every cartoon is supposed to be um, funny, by the way. <laughs> uh, this one, the Boy Scouts. Um, now that you've learned how to tie a knot, I'm going to teach you how to make a fire. Uh, now, let's, let's keep in mind the Boy Scout motto is, one of their mottos is to be friendly. I will assure you that those who called me up after this cartoon ran that identified themselves as scouts were not very friendly. <laughs> um, this was the uh, Catholic Church and the priest. <laughs> yeah, now, look at the date on this. It's 93. I drew this when I was the cartoonist, the staff cartoonist at the News Tribune. And this could still run today and be pertinent, which is really sad. Uh, this one, Perez Dispenser. <laughs> that was another, that was another groaner. Um, now, um, do people respond to my cartoon? This one created a, a big storm of controversy um, within the military ranks. And also people did respond. Bush wins, you suck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's one of the tamer responses I get to my work. Now, um, Global warming, I think, is real, and I think Santa Claus feels the same way. <laughs> now, since I've been back here, I, I've been following the story at Hanford, and I just, I was thinking, who's running that place over there? And uh, I think now we know. <laughs> now, um, it's, it's interesting, people think that because you're, the, you're a cartoonist that you're always this brutal guy who wants to go out and make everybody's life really uncomfortable. And that's very true, by the way. Um, <laughs> that is what we're really we're paid to do. Um, it, it's not a fair medium. When you look at a cartoon, it's not supposed to be fair. It's very, very biased. And, um, but cartoonists do have a heart sometimes. So we do tribute cartoons. I did a couple cartoons when John Lennon died, when Bob Hope died, um, when Steinbrenner died, and I had Billy Martin in the background, you know, thumbing his nose at him. So, uh, but I did one when my father died, and then when my mother passed away. And their little slice of heaven was northern Arizona, uh, walking in the mountains and in the meadows. So this was my tribute cartoon of my mother meeting my father in their slice of heaven. Yeah. So, you know, cartoonists do have a little heart. It's a tiny, tiny little heart, but we do have a heart. So I'm going to leave you with the words of, uh, of Gunther Grass, the German writer, who said, it is the duty of everybody in a um, democracy to keep their mouth open. And, and I will add to that, keep your mind open too. And look around you in your community. We can all make a change, whether it's with editorial cartoons that are a school board meeting, calling the mayor, calling the police department, call your senator, call your congressman, get up and shout at the top of your lungs, and you can really change your community for the better. There's a lot of people in, in this audience I know are doing great things to change their community. It can be done, and it's kind of your duty to do it. So look around and think of about something that you could change. And remember, you know, that um, diversity is really our strength, not unity. It's diversity of thought that is our strength. And that is something that has always stuck with me. It's not always pretty, but it's oh so American. Thank you very much. <laughs>